life. All right. Hello, everyone. Woo! My name's Chris McKillop. I run, I'm the engineering manager for Android TV. Uh, I've got behind me here uh, Leo Bagdasarian. He's the head UX designer for the Android TV stuff, and Andrew Gion, who runs the team responsible for the live TV integration in the platform. We're going to talk to you guys a little bit today about exactly why we bothered doing Android TV to begin with, and get into a little bit more detail uh, than the demo we did during the keynote, and we'll have some more fun surprises at the end. So some facts and figures. Average American watches 30 hours of TV a week. That is a lot of eyeball time. 120 million smart TVs are shipped every year, and more than 5 billion hours are watched daily worldwide in front of their TV. This is a lot of, uh, of time for people to be engaged in content from Google applications, from your applications. And these are computing devices now. These aren't just dumb panels uh, picking up over the air signal. So, but there's no standard platform today. Um, you know, this is a huge problem for, for Google's app developers, for app developers around the world. You either need to do custom work for every single TV that ships or fall back to just doing HTML. In-app purchasing and monetization, non-existent on a standard platform across TV, unlike in mobile. And so it looks a lot, TV looks a lot like the mobile space did in 2006, where you have all these manufacturers all building their own platform and all asking app developers to support them with no unified story. So Android to the rescue. Yay, established ecosystem thanks to you guys and thanks to the device manufacturers out there. A billion plus 30-day active users, a million plus apps on Play Store, 50 billion app downloads. It's, it's incredible what you guys have uh, helped us uh, accomplish over the last few years. We have a huge support from the industry, both for SOCs and for networking. Uh, and across APIs and protocols. And more importantly, Play Store brings everything together so that you can do multi-device installs, in-app purchasing and billing, so everyone can actually make money off this ecosystem. So what is an Android TV? It is just a new form factor for Android. We've announced several today at I.O., and so I wanted to welcome TV to the family with you guys. And so going forward, starting with Ellen, going forward, uh, TV is going to be supported right alongside phones, tablets, and wearables. There is not going to be, we don't really, my goal internally at Google is actually that no one talks about Android TV in a year. That is just assumed. Like, no one talks really about Android tablets and phones. Like, it's just Android. And that's what I'm trying to uh, accomplish inside, and hopefully with you guys too. You know, we've added a lot of great features for developers in L to make it really easy for you to bring your applications to the television. So I'm going to really quickly go through some of these, and then Leo's going to jump into UX. We set really aggressive hardware specs uh, for Android TV devices. Um, we want to make sure that there's enough CPU and GPU in the devices that claim to be Android TVs to have really great performance for apps and games. Um, minimum of one gigs of RAM and eight gigs of flash, so there's lots of storage for apps. Wi-Fi and, and Ethernet for connectivity, so there'll always be fast pipes in. Bluetooth 4 and Bluetooth LE, which I think is going to be really important going forward for both. Uh, accessories and for things like uh, co-presence and, and things that could happen. Um, also wanted to ensure that there was a very high level of DRM. These are primarily media consumption devices. Android's always required Widevine level two, which is fine for SD, which is okay on a phone, but we require Widevine level one on all TV devices. That's already studio approved uh, in, in most of the world for uh, HD content. You know, we're not just targeting TV panels. Uh, there was, I've been watching the press after the keynote today, and a lot of people are asking, hey, this is just for TVs. We don't understand. It's not. It's, it's also for media streamers. Um, uh, I'm not going to mention brand names, but media streamers, set-top boxes. And when we say set-top boxes, we're talking about cable set-top boxes. So carriers like Comcast or Bwig or SFR who are bringing premium content over their lines into your house. Um, and also uh, micro consoles. Uh, you're going to see a lot of... Uh, boxes that come with a game controller over the course of the next year running Android TV. And we differentiate those from media streamers, both from the point of view that a, a, a micro console tends to have a higher CPU performance, as well as a higher price, and also not as approachable because of the game controller. 
We're standardizing input devices across all of Android TV, so there's a minimum set of controls. We have a, a virtual remote control app that you'll be able to get off the Play Store uh, uh, to, to interact with uh, your developer devices if you request them online. Um, we're also standardizing on game controller button mapping. We think one of the biggest problems we've had with adoption of game controllers on Android is the lack of a standard button mapping. Uh, it means that app developers had to worry about whether it was this controller or that game controller in their game. No more. So we're mapping all the popular ones to the standard for you in L, and we're publishing a spec for both game controller manufacturers and game developers so everyone can work together. So this will be across not just TV, but phones and tablets as well. So it'll be really, really powerful. We're also really pushing hard on all the hardware OEMs to have microphones in all their devices. Uh, we think that in the living room, no one wants to type on a keyboard. We have a keyboard. You notice we didn't show it during the demo. No one wants to type on a keyboard on their sofa. So being able to, being able to use your voice to really quickly get to the uh, details of what you want is super powerful. We've done multimedia improvements. We've added new media components. We've built a TV input framework, and Andrew's going to go into great detail on that for you in a bit. We've uh, switched cr to Chrome WebView, uh, and, and, and actually supports HTML5 video with DRM. So for folks that have an investment there, you'll be able to keep your playback. It's completely Google Cast supported. So all Android TV devices will also be Google Cast receivers. Um, that means all existing Cast applications will just work. This is actually supported by the Cast team. This isn't a, a, a strange thing the Android team's doing on the side. The Cast team supports this. And in L, which isn't in the preview, but in L release, we're going to be adding APIs to allow your APKs to talk to each other through Cast. We'll call it Cast to Native or Cast to Apps. And that means that you'd actually be able to have first screen and second screen experiences uh, at, at equal levels. Probably the meat of what we've added for TV in, in the L release is a new lean back framework and launcher. And when we say lean back, we're talking about, you know, you're on your sofa and you're leaning back. So, so and, and YouTube coined the phrase as a, as a way to think about how people want to interact with TVs in the living room. And you're going to get a lot of details and background on that from Leo here in a sec. But we've added a new optimized home screen and system UI. We sort of merged them together. Uh, sort of think of the notification shade, uh, all apps, and your home screen all being in one place on TV. Um, and we're requiring that all hardware manufacturers use our launcher. So um, there will be a consistency across these devices for developers, and developers can be guaranteed that um, certain behaviors are there, and we'll get into that with how the content recommendations work. We've also built a new set of fragments um, that you can use to really quickly take your existing APK and bring it to the television. Um, I think this is the first time we've offered a standard uh, element in the uh, framework library that operates at such a high level. You can, you can really just treat it almost like it's a, um, a, a data level API if you want to. It's going to be completely open source with the L developer preview. You can go in and change it around any way you want to, but you'll be able to really, really quickly get your app up and running. Um, and what, for a bonus for all you Google TV developers out there, I don't know if there are any in the house, um, but uh, uh, if you want to support your uh, Google TV V4 devices, uh, our framework actually works on that. So there's millions of Google TV version 4 devices out there already installed, and this will give you a, a path forward. We've also been optimizing for TV, Google's own internal APIs that you guys get through Play Services. So things like in-app purchase flow, Play Game Services, G Plus sign-in, and we're going to be going through and updating all of them. So you can use the same APIs you use on phone and tablets, and basically for free from Google, get a TV optimized experience for your customers. Um, <clears throat> our studious head of design, Matias Duarte, who did a great uh, job this morning uh, in our keynote, always likes to say this when we start talking about TV. When your butt hits the sofa, you lose 20 IQ points. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to use a computer. right? You don't want your TV to be a computer. You want it to entertain you. And so on that, I'm going to bring up Leo to talk a little bit about designing for Android TV. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so people love TV. Um, not the demo yet, guys. Uh, when, we, when we began designing Android TV, we looked at the qualities that made TV so easy and approachable. Uh, we noticed a few qualities that made, that made, the, uh, uh, we, that made the, the content unique to TV. Like when you turn it on, uh, you're instantly watching something. You're, you're already in, the, in content. And how when it's playing, even when you're looking at uh, a guide or a menu, it continues, it continues along, it continues the experience. 
and how, at its core, it really is simple. Um, browsing is effortless. It's just channel up and channel down. And on top of that, uh, movies and TV can be so emotional. They, uh, they're so immersive and engaging. So um, when, we, when we really thought about bringing, bringing Android to TV, we wanted to do just that, bring Android to TV. Uh, and keep those content-centric, uh, immersive qualities that make TV so great. <clears throat> so how are we going to do that? Well, uh, we needed to design components optimized for browsing and watching content. One of the most critical aspects of design is how and where people uh, interact with it. So with TV, that could be from 10 feet away, uh, with food or drink in your hand, or with a baby, and even sometimes half asleep. <clears throat> For Android TV, we standardized the minimum button set uh, to the five-way directional pad, uh, plus home and back. There's no menu button, and there's no pointer. So how does this affect app design? Well, of course, there's no touchscreen. So you don't have that random quick access to uh, different ele uh, inter uh, elements in your interface. So for mo most layouts, like um, on tablets and phone, you're going to have to uh, kind of rethink how that kind of gets adapted to TV. With a D-pad, you have focus-based navigation. Uh, you move around by moving focus from one element to the other. So when you, when you design your apps, uh, you want to take advantage of those two axes of direction. Um, align your objects in rows and grids so uh, it, it's really intuitive to, to navigate uh, inside your app. In the past, Android had basic support for, uh, for focus-based navigation, um, but today we're announcing the Leanback support library. This is a collection of framework components uh, that are optimized uh, to build fast, fluid apps for TV. Um, uh, they're they're focused on content browsing uh, with smooth animations and uh, center-pinned scrolling. So your focus is always right there, center in view. But we went one step further. We built full application structure fragments, uh, which can be used to create end-to-end -end apps. Let's take a look at the structure for uh, a typical Android uh, TV-based app. Most successful apps on TV are content uh, uh, consumption-centric, so they offer media like movies, music, TV, and pictures. Typically, a user enters, uh, looks around, and fi finds something of interest either by search or just browsing the, the hierarchy. Um, then you know, they, they get more detail, like uh, description or price, and ultimately, finally, play it. Included in Leanback are these full app structure fr fragments. Um, as Chris mentioned, something that Android hasn't really done before. These can be used as is or customized to suit your app's needs. They're optimized for TV, over scan safe, uh, with fast, uh, fluid animations, and support for immersive imagery. So bringing it all together. Using this navigation model and the new components of Leanback, we wanted to create an interface that was focused uh, for entertainment. Thanks to all of you guys, there's a ton of great content uh, in the Play Store that's just begging to be on the big screen. But we wanted to go beyond just the grid of apps. The TV and living room is about fun and entertainment. Uh, as you've seen uh, from the keynote, there's a theme across Android. Uh, to bring these contextually relevant notifications to different form factors. Um, and that applies to TV as well. But these notifications don't, uh, they're not the same notifications you're used to. They come as content recommendations. We wanted a home screen that gave you quick access to, the, to like a blend of content from the sources you use most. One that encouraged the simple lean back browsing and serendipitous discovery. And one that got to know you and made it easier to access your most used apps and games, and ultimately one that felt immersive and engaging. And with that, let's go to the demos. And your job is to tackle this mantle. You want to see content, so we, we bring live TV and movies right to the forefront. If you're watching your content and you hit home like you would do on any Android device, we overlay that on top of the live content. These are new APIs that are coming uh, in L to allow you to indicate that your app uh, is, is, we call it gregarious. And so if your app is gregarious and willing to share its content with the launcher, it will show through. Otherwise, uh, it, it's going to be hidden. 
Do you have the clicker? Oh. So when you first land in the home screen of, a, of an Android TV device, you're going to see these really rich content recommendations. So these are coming from apps on the system and are being ranked and sorted based on the user's usage of the device. So we rely on each of you to provide the right content based on how you know your users using your application. That's stuff we don't know. But we know based off the aggregate how people are using their device. And so we will sort and rank. I was showing pictures, I was showing uh, Tommy Emmanuel uh, to uh, Dave Burke after the keynote. And so it's now recommend, YouTube's now recommending more Tommy Emmanuel for me. And I use YouTube a lot, so you'll see there's actually two of them on the screen here because we know that I use YouTube a lot. This is my account, this is my personal device, so if you see something weird, it's, 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 just, it's just because I'm kind of weird. So, so it, the, the goal is that you come, you come to this content recommendation stream, you see exactly what you want to watch, and you start watching it, and you're done. One click to play. But what if you don't find something that you want? We, we decided to make sure that both search and all your applications are available. So there's a common pattern throughout the platform. You go up to search. So if you move up to the search affordance on the home screen, or you'll see when we go into the applications that search is also in the up position. Um, so you can do search. So I'm going to use this to see if this works. Works. It's always very dangerous to demo things with Wi-Fi, so forgive me. Um, let me see. Movie starring Tom Cruise. Thank you. So th pretend this is my remote control, and I've got my virtual remote that has the microphone button. Hopefully, when you're using this on your TV, you're just using the remote control that's in your hand and picking it up and searching. So, so that, that search exists uh, uh, at the top of, of your home screen. You can go look for content that you're specifically interested in. Um, or you can uh, uh, look for actors or actresses. And of course, as Dave showed during the keynote, there's a ton of ways in which you can then pivot on both those actors and actresses using the, 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 the Google's knowledge graph um, to, to, uh, to find things. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on search because um, search is, is, is more of a Google feature and not necessarily a developer feature. I think it's much more interesting to start looking at what happens. How do you, how do you actually make content recommendations? How do you get into the apps row? Because you'll notice these apps look a little bit different than you're used to seeing apps on a, on a, on a launcher on an Android phone. Um, we've standardized on a, a 16 by 9 poster uh, for, for doing your application launchers. You'll see that we've worked with these first app developers and game developers to show and set the standard for how apps should work. Have the text of your name of your application in your icon. Have it big and bright and bold and on-brand coloring. Um, uh, and make sure that it has some movement and contrast. And that's true in both the games row and the apps row. So, so you want to know how you get in the apps row. So we're making a pretty, uh, pretty uh, strong statement with TV. We don't believe the TV should just be tablet apps on, the, on, on television. And so we actually are going to require developers to make a few uh, changes uh, to their application in order to show up in this new launching experience. So you have to add to your manifest the statement that I support lean back. Um, uh, you don't have to use our framework, but you do have to declare that you support leanback. And that way, the leanback launcher knows that this application is going to work for the user that has a D-pad or a game controller. Um, we don't want to offer up applications that immediately say, please touch here to continue uh, on a TV where you can't touch anything. The same goes for games. Um, if you want to be a game, you can declare yourself a game, and that's how we sort and, and uh, separate the games in the app section. You might ask, why are we doing that? Um, I use a lot of YouTube, a lot of play movies and TV. I've been watching TED and Showtime, and you'll see those are all in the left-hand position. They're the easiest for me to get to. I don't have to think so much. Again, 20 IQ points lost when you hit the sofa. So I, we make sure that the apps you use the most are at the left. Games and media consumption applications have very different access patterns. They have very different use models. When you play a game, you tend to play it a lot for a period of time, and then maybe you don't ever play it again. And that's not true with media consumption applications where you're going in and out of them based on what shows and what things you want to do. So we didn't want the games to get pushed away just because you were very rapidly and frequently entering a series of applications. So we promoted them to be their own top-level entity. So that's how you do that. So <clears throat> the recommendations come in through the standard Android 
notification system. Um, uh, we've added some new tags so that we can tell the difference between a, uh, a notification that would show up in the notification shade on your phone and tablet and, and, and these notifications. We thought it was powerful to use the existing APIs and not try to invent something new when this would work just fine. Everyone is free to post this. It's a totally democratic system. Uh, uh, and we watch in how the user uses the device and sort and rank appropriately. We're recommending, I think, five to 10 notifications and content recommendations uh, from different apps. Um, Leo hates it when I do this, but I'm gonna launch the E24 app for a second. Uh, uh, they've done a really great job. And, and if, 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 if it'll load the content from their app here, I should start seeing uh, food recommendations like order a pizza in my content recommendation row, uh, which, which is pretty great. You're sitting on the sofa watching a movie, you want to order a pizza. But it doesn't just need to be movies. The key to this, though, is we want these to be one-click access. We don't want people clicking on things on the content recommendation row and having to go through a big flow. So for example, like if I'm sitting here and I want to see Now You See Me, I can click on Now You See Me. I've been watching it previously, so it's going to resume, and it's going to kick right back into that movie. Our networking seems to be pretty slow in here. And count there we go. One, to ten out loud. one two, okay. three, so, four, five. Stop. Uh, is All right. So, yes. let's go on there. All right. So I'm going to now dive in. Now, that, that actually, that movie's playing from Play Movies, as you can see from the, script, from the content recommendation. I'm going to go into the top level of Play Movies now. Play Movies from Google is probably sort of a canonical example of a lean back app using those lean back components that Leo was talking about. This is the browse fragment, um, uh, which we have set full screen for Play Movies because we're happy to use our own, uh, our own APIs directly. You can see that you can very quickly move through the, what we call the fast lane on the side which will move you through uh, uh, all the different content on, on, on the right-hand side. You can move over to the left. You notice very smooth animation, transitions, fade-ins. These all come for free when you use the Lean Back li Framework Library. Um, and then you can scroll through the same content again, but now with a little more details with ratings and the title of the show showing up on the cards, which didn't necessarily show, didn't show up in this more compressed form. So if you go into one of these TV shows or movies, so let's go into Silver Linings Playbook, this is what we call the details fragment. Uh, has a background, has the ability to put some text and uh, uh, some, some artwork, lets you play the trailer, buy it, and also then have additional browse rows built right in there. So reusing the same components that we had from the previous screen in the details view so that users have a, uh, a, a, a grounding point where they can understand where they're coming from. Addition, besides these sort of two browsing and details, if you have something like genres, like action adventure, you might want to throw up a whole bunch of content. So for, we actually have a grid view where you can just put tons and tons and tons of content. So if you uh, try out PBS Kids, you'll see they use that as their only UI. Perfect for kids. Just all the cover shots for all the shows for kids, really brightly colored. They don't need lots of text on the screen. They know what show they want to watch. When they want to watch Callahoo, they want to go there. Um, and so that works out really well. Let's see here. Now, in addition, we're going, not in the L preview, but coming with the full L release, we're going to have um, content con uh, playback controls for you in the framework library as well. So Play Movies is using an early version of this. So if I hit, any, hit the A button or the center, click on the thing, uh, I bring up the transport controls, I can fast forward, I can rewind, I can play, I can pause. Uh, and, and you also get, uh, a, just like in everywhere else in the system, you get browse rows. Let me see if I can actually get Woody Harrelson's face on the screen here. Oh, uh, come on. In your account. In fact, try to stand up. All right. Well, I can't get his face screen on the face. Play Movies does some neat things when you do that. But uh, additionally, you'll get additional browse rows uh, below the transport controls uh, where you can get info cards. You can put up additional information, reviews. Uh, uh, there's info cards on the actors in Play Movies that I'm trying to show you here. Uh, it's not being terribly cooperative. Oh, well. So those transport controls are going to be coming with the, with the L release. So 
I want to go through some different examples now. So if that's the canonical form of all the different screens that we give you for free and lean back, what I'd like to show you now is YouTube. So um, I don't know if any of you used YouTube on a, on a TV before. YouTube has a pretty standard application that they put on smart TVs. And they work with us to bring you the YouTube experience into the lean, using the lean back framework. Now they really liked having the fast lane down the side for going through all the different playlists I subscribe to and all the different content. But they didn't want it to just be browse rows. They wanted it to be a grid. So they made that modification using standard framework components so that they could have a, a grid of content because they have so much content in, in, in YouTube. Simple rows wasn't enough for them. So you can very quickly move through the content. It still feels like a lean back app. It still feels like an Android TV experience, but they are using slightly modified versions of the framework. So the Tune and Radio guys uh, have supported Google TV for years. And so we reached out to them when we were getting ready to do this launch. And they said, well, yeah, we'll bring our Google TV uh, app over and, and it'll be fine. And then they saw all the apps we were building. They said, well, we want our app to look like that. And so a week before I.O., they said, we're going to rewrite it all. And so they did. And so they wrote this app that uses the framework components in one week. Um, it, it looks just like Play Movies, which is what you'd expect because they haven't had a chance to go in and make big changes to the app. But it just shows you that they were able to bring a fluid, fast operating application to Android TV, one developer, I think, in like about a week. Uh, it'll be on Play Store in the preview Play Store. Uh, pretty impressive that they were able to pull that off. Now, the TED guys have sort of a very distinct set of design guidelines that they want to use for their applications. So although they're using the same lean back framework that everyone else is using, they have a totally and radical different look and feel. So but this is still using the same uh, 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 browse-based rows, but they've changed the cards and they've changed the card-to-card -card animation, which is all possible. They've only they've clipped where the rows are on the screen so that they can have the full bleed art that you see as you go through the different different movies. So it's completely compliant with the design guidelines. It's using the framework, but it looks like a TED experience. Um, this is one of our uh, one of the big goals we had for this was to have that kind of flexibility for app developers to both quickly get on the platform and get Adopt TV, while also have the ability to make those sort of customized brand on changes. And now, the last one I'm going to show you is Showtime. Now, the folks at Showtime have a very uh, uh, strong. Uh, 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 design for their application on TV. This is completely custom widgetry. So they don't use any piece of lean back. But the Showtime guys understand living room. And so it's okay. They've written an Android application that uses you know, low level Android framework components to do focus management, but they're not using lean back. But that's okay because they're fully compliant with the left to right navigation, the up down browse paradigms, and everything's usable with a D pad. So this sort of, sort of shows you just sort of the levels and the degrees to which you can. Uh, make changes. So on that note, I'm going to end my part of the demo and switch back over to slides and let Andrew come and talk a little bit about the live TV integration on the Android framework. Thank you, everyone. Oh. Thanks, Chris. So with the Olympic framework, we expect you guys can build apps quickly. And then this app will mostly serve uh, audio video content. And then we believe it could fulfill all the user's experience. But if you think about it, see, actually, there are something big missing. So if you think about TV device, both TV set and set of boxes from operators, and even streamer boxes, a lot of people recently believe that TV experience, uh, video content, watching experience in the living room, will move from broadcast TV to online streaming. However, the data shows that still uh, in many parts of the world, majority, majority of the time user spends on watching video content is live TV. So we wanted to build a framework to support proper uh, live TV integration to build a device like this. And as we mentioned in the previous slide earlier, there are still hundreds of millions of TVs and tens of billions of set-top boxes are being, being produced in the world every year. And when we want to, we, if we want to claim Android to be an operating system to build a TV and set-up box, we, thought we, need to, we need to have a framework to support these kind of devices. 
So when it comes to making a TV or set-up box, first problem every device maker faces is that there are a lot of different TV standards. Like, it's not that much fragmented, this is, but this is one layer of it. It's only digital broadcasting standard. But if you look into more sub-standards, there are many more. So it's very complicated. And then uh, each device maker chooses their own solution to fulfill the requirement for each market. And it only works for their, that uh, device types. So we thought that in order to uh, make Android, Android as an operating system to support these device makers, we thought uh, we had to have some kind of a good framework. And then, in addition to TV standard, if you look at the TV device especially, there are a lot of different physical input port, uh, HDMI component, uh, AV port, and built-in tuner. So what does that mean is, people usually hook up a lot of devices to, to TV. And of course, still, for example, in US, more than 80% of the people living in US watches TV from pay TV operator setup box. What does that mean? is that if you look at your living room today, there are a lot of remote controllers lying around. And whenever you uh, play game or play Blu-ray disc or watch TV, or it depends on your activity. You have to pick up the right remote control. And then a lot of devices are competing against your uh, time for each HDMI input. So this is quite frustrating. So we've been thinking about a solution, how we can fix this. But we cannot fix it, fix it ourselves alone. So we need some support from the developers. So let's take a look at what we built so that we can give you an idea of what we expect uh, as a whole ecosystem, including ourselves and developers, can do to solve this problem. So during the keynote today, should I press something? Stop. Oh. Yeah, tell them to switch. Could you, oh, okay. So there was not demo. So there was a screenshot somehow. So, <laughs> sorry, I was too vivid, so I was confused. Uh, so you can see the icon called TV, and uh, if you click it, you can watch TV. In the sandbox, uh, if you visit the sandbox today, you can actually watch real live TV over the air uh, up, um, upstairs. But here, for keynote and demo, we are using a mock-up demo. Basically, we are using some local file to demonstrate multiple channels. So as you can see, you have a standard channel banner. It shows up a title of the program and timing and things like that. And then if you bring up a menu, these are ch uh, channels a user has been watching recently. And it's being automatically ordered by the frequency and then uh, ranking we thought user may want to go back to the channel. And then these are the menus. This is a preview version. We just spent like a few weeks to put together this UI. So it's going to be much better in the future. But for now, we have some essential options. And one thing I want to show you is, that, is the TV input menu. So the concept of a TV input is very important to us. We wanted to come up with a single application to watch every single live TV channel live channel, but there are multiple ways to get live TV sources. So we define a concept called TV input. TV input represents a method to provide list of channels. So in this case, we actually called out unified TV input, but in the future there will be no unified input. TV app itself will run in a unified input mode all the time, but just for now, they're separate. And we have three different TV input sources. If we click each one of them, each one of them will have their own channels, fake channels. So the first one has two channels. And then let's go back. And then second one, if I choose the second one, this is to demonstrate HLS-based stream. This is very common uh, test video most uh, streaming content developer knows about. And then here, we just have three different fake channels. So this shows you each input can have a different channel. So if I go back to uh, our demo TV input, we can see four channels, which look nice because we fake up. It should be nice. <laughs> so concept is when you switch different TV input, you can see different channels. But in ideal world, you just shouldn't have to change the input. 
from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2 or something, it shouldn't happen, or built-in tuner. So the idea is we wanted to unify all of that. So this mode, unified input, demonstrates how we merge all the channels. So if I go back to a channel listing, you can see every single channel from every single input. That's the concept we built. And this should be the basis to do anything on top of it around live TV. That's why I wanted to show. Let's go back to slide to talk about a little more. Slide, please. Okay. So this is the UIU, so I thought it was a live, but it's not. <clears throat> so basically, there are multiple ways uh, the live TV source can be delivered to user. First of all, many parts of the world still over the air broadcast is very popular. You have antenna or cable, I mean, just uh, cable to get the antenna feed to your living room and hook up and scan and watch. Second is uh, paying uh, some money to pay TV operator and they deliver your set up box and set up box actually get your live TV feed. Uh, up until recently, cable operator or satellite was popular, but these days, uh, IPTV operators are getting more popular. So this uh, second type. Third type is just purely from IP. And in this case, there could be a pay TV operator which uses IP, it's IPTV operator, or some online sources. But we wanted to be able to unify all of this if user has a multiple access. Let's say in some countries like Luxembourg, it's crazy, uh, country where you have access to four different countries' TV feed and then uh, three different type of TV standard and online sources. And people in Europe move a lot. So Germany people live in France and they want to watch the Germany channel. And English people live in Sweden and Sweden want to watch the English channel. So this is all mixed. So uh, especially in Europe and even in some other part of the world, people have a demand to watch live TV channel from different worlds. How we can solve that? So let's say we unify, we build a framework, so some application as a plugin to live TV app can support the live TV feed, then we just unify into a single lineup, and then we can filter them by category or quality or by user's preference on top of it. So, the reason why I'm talking to you today is we cannot build this unified channel ourselves alone. So the, there are a few use cases we can get some help from developers. First use case is, let's say you're just getting the TV signal from pay TV operator setup box, like most people in America. Then how can we unify that? How can we use a single remote control to watch live TV and at the same time enjoy a bunch of online, online uh, streaming content and play game? So in this case, we expect some developers to write a module. And this category, we just categorize it as a virtual TV input. It is a sub, uh, APK, which includes TV input service. Uh, you will learn uh, the detail about it tomorrow once the uh, SDK is published. So virtual input can talk to setup box if they understand how to talk to. They're usually, I mean, recently many t pay TV operators are publishing the protocol to talk to the setup box or cloud API to check the lineup of the subscriber and fetch EPG data and then even send a comment to tune. So this virtual input module can translate the command from the single system live TV app to tune and then get that command, translate to proprietary command the setup box understand and actual AV data can come from setup box through HDMI port to TV device. So then from user's point of view, user is using TV app you just saw to watch TV from setup box and change the channel to Android TV but actual change the channel action will happen on the setup box. That's what we call two-way pairing, two-way connection. So that is actually possible today with many pay TV operator setup box, and we do have a close partner, uh, some uh, third-party developer partners who are working on a few version of this, and we hope some people in the room or in the world to build these kind of things to bring seamless experience. Second case is, uh, as you can see in the sandbox today, 
the device we have here doesn't have any tuner, but it, actually, it can actually watch live TV. How can it be possible? Because there's an external device which converts uh, broadcast feed from antenna or cable provider into IP feed. So in this case, uh, IP input device can get the AV data from the device which we call as a place shifting device. Shifting place means that, let's say you have an antenna feed coming down the, uh, the corner of the house, and then you place it here, place it there, and then once it converts to IP, anywhere in your house where your Wi-Fi connection can be reached, you can get the signal. So that's why we call it place shifting. So there are many types of devices like this, but today in Sandbox, we are using the device called HT Home Run, the made by company named Silicon Dust in Livermore. So it was very small and uh, easy to use device we are using. So that device has its own command set for us to fetch EPG data and also send the command to tune. And then we can publish the EPG data to the common database in the Android TV device. Then live, TV, live TV app can render channels and watch TV. Lastly, uh, in case where t live TV signal is delivered via IP, um, one can write a TV input module that gets the feed via IP, push the AV data via IP, and send the command over IP. So there are two cases of uh, IP inputs. One is multicast IP input on the managed network. For example, IPTV operator has their own managed high quality network. So this input can actually join multicast network and stream TV. In uh, the other case is that uh, if there are if, if any content provider or broadcaster has a server somewhere in internet, provides adaptive streaming based live TV, then this input can go fetch it. Basically it's a streaming, but from user's per perspective it's a live TV. So that is actually quite common by many operators. Let's say you are a Time Warner customer or some of our, the custom, uh, uh, pay TV operators customer in some part of the world, then as a subscriber, you get access to their IP feed so that you can watch TV on your tablet or phone. The same type of uh, sources can be used to power live TV on Android TV. So as a result, we imagine one day, no matter where you are getting live TV sources, we hope users to enjoy all the content, including live TV and streaming content and games using single remote control and game controller. That's, uh, that's our hope. So, there's, but there's more. So, probably I can, uh, there are few, many people who see me multiple times. I've been pushing the Android framework to enhance the AV pipeline for many years. And now we are really getting close uh, with L release. We are asking developers to build the apps to deliver content, especially video and audio. The problem is if Android platform itself is not capable of supporting your streaming protocol, or closed caption, or high quality video playback, even if we build a lean back framework, it's actually not easy to write uh, apps. So what we've been working on is uh, enhancing the video framework. So first of all, in terms of supporting streaming protocol, we have a separate session going on, uh, either today or tomorrow, about XO Player. XO Player is open sourced, will be open sourced. Video Player uses uh, low-level primitives such as video crypto, video DRM, and video codec. And it's a Java, a Java implementation of video player. And it gives you MPEG dash and smooth streaming protocol implementation by default. And since it's open sourced, you can take the source code and then implement your own custom streaming protocol if you have. So that we will not be the blocking factor for you to support your content in your backend so that you can write an app that stream your content. And on top of that, we've been, uh, there has been a lot of requests to support more uh, various type of subtitles. Uh, so in L release, at least we are adding TTML and CA608. And especially CA608 was high demand request from many content providers because uh, the especially TV shows being captured from broadcast 
and then delivered as a streaming media. Their closed caption source is encoded in CA608 format. So unless we support that, those content cannot be supported. And now we already support WebVTT since KitKat. So we have three formats. Maybe there are some other formats too, but these are uh, what we can support by L. And when you play content on phone versus on the TV device, TV screen is big. So if there's any glitch in terms of audio video sync or, or video rendering, you just can notice easily. So the bar, bar for video playback quality is very high on TV. So we spend a lot of energy on making uh, audio video playback quality uh, to be TV quality by using TV associates feature to turn on audio and video. And we started to support VP9 and HEVC codec to support 4K content and AC3 obviously to support ATS's content. And as Chris mentioned, we support Wi-Fi level one and pre-ready. Thanks. Right on top. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. So during the keynote this morning and also in the sandbox, if you've seen it, there's, and up here, right here, uh, we have, we've been demoing all this uh, on, a, on real hardware. And we call that hardware ADT1. So some old guy once said, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It, it, this is an important statement when you're building a new platform or adding a new device type to an existing platform. App developers don't want to support you if you don't have a piece of hardware for them to develop their apps against. And hardware manufacturers don't want to support your new platform unless you show them running it on another piece of hardware. And so we were the only ones that could fix this. Uh, so what we did was build ADT1. Uh, this is a, uh, a media streaming micro console, choose your acronym that you want to have. But we built it for developers. We built it originally for inside of Google. Um, this, this chicken and egg problem exists with everybody. Uh, everyone has too busy schedules and, 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 and doesn't have time and doesn't necessarily believe that what you're building is real unless you give them something to play with. So, so what we've decided to do um, is take that box, which is a Tegra 4 CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of flash, 2 by 2 MIMO Wi-Fi, HDMI, it's running L Developer Preview, and it's fully unlocked. It comes with a developer cable um, so that you can reflash it and do whatever you want. It's, it's, it's essentially the same level of openness as a, as, as a Nexus device. And so everyone here at the session today is going to get one of them. So all, everyone watching the live stream, starting tomorrow, you're going to be able to go online and request one. We have a small number that we're going to give to uh, existing Android developers. Uh, please go online to, to the URL there. It won't be live till tomorrow. Uh, and, and request your device, and we'll get those out to you. Um, so there, the, you know, this should let everyone here in the room experience what we've been showing you. Start bringing your apps over to Android TV and, and really sort of see what's next for Android. There's going to be vouchers. Um, you'll get the device tomorrow with, with all the other hardware. There's vouchers that'll be at the doors. Make sure you get your voucher on the way out. Um, and, and, and don't rush. There's lots for everybody, OK? <laughs> so just get your voucher. You'll be able to pick it up tomorrow downstairs in registration. Um, it won't be a problem at all. So I want to thank everyone for, for coming to the presentation today. We'll have all the documentation, screenshots, example code, um, uh, Git, GitHub projects up online tomorrow for you to get moving. So enjoy and thank you.